This is the weather office. Cloudy with scattered showers and moderate temperatures. Wellington, strong southerly winds, weather changeable with further showers but some fair intervals, temperatures cold. Marlborough, fresh to strong but decreasing southerly winds. The state of the weather concerns every one of us. While we all like to know what sort of weather to expect from day to day, many of us have to know. Whatever our interest and wherever we are, it's the work of the Weather Office to tell us regularly what the weather is doing and is most likely to do over our part of the country. Hello? Forecasting here? Yes, go ahead please. Into the Dominion Weather Office in Wellington pours daily a succession of reports from weather observers in all sorts of places, on and away from the mainland. In all, New Zealand is served by 120 reporting stations. The major ones report at three hourly intervals day and night, the smaller ones less often. The information they have to convey is contained in the five-figure code blocks used by meteorological officers throughout the world. From islands as far away as the Tokelaus come reports from trained native observers. Meteorological facilities for much of the South Pacific are New Zealand's responsibility. In the far south, on uninhabited Campbell Island, a little party of professional weathermen does a long, lonely year's duty observing weather conditions at the only station between New Zealand and the Pole. But it's by amateur observers throughout the country that most of the routine information is collected. All but 17 of the reporting stations in the network are their responsibility. Their voluntary, conscientious work is vital to the weather service. Of considerable value, too, are reports from ships at sea. Australia is the only big land mass near enough to be able to supply information useful to New Zealand weathermen. And as the weather crosses the Tasman, it's forever changing. For this reason, Forecasting for New Zealand is a particularly difficult business. To make up for the lack of shore stations, ships and aircraft of all nations send in regular reports. The Weather Service relies a great deal upon international cooperation. Ventura to Weather Wellington. Present position 34.2 degrees south, 163.7 east. Wind southwesterly force 3. Sea temperature 61. Short moderate swell from southwest. Weather partly cloudy since last report. Now 3 tenths low cloud. Course of ship due east. Speed 11 knots. Barometer rising steadily. Rise of 2 millibars during last 3 hours. Present reading, 1,023 mil. On Wellington's Tinakori Hill is one of the three post office radio stations which receive the scattered shipping reports. By teleprinter line and still in code form, the information goes from there to the Dominion Weather Office. As each report comes in, its contents are translated into a new set of symbols and plotted on the current chart. At Mechanics Bay, Auckland, specialized information of conditions in the upper air is obtained. A small transmitter carried by the balloon sends back a signal recording temperature, pressure and humidity up to as high as 70,000 feet. To check the course and drift of the balloon while it's still in sight, a theodolite is used. At Fenuapai, also near Auckland, radar helps to seek out much-needed weather data. 
a tinfoil target is trailed behind the balloon. When the invisible beam from this huge radar bowl strikes the target, an echo is reflected back and registers on this panel. From the relative positions of the target, the direction and velocity of stratospheric winds are calculated. Now all the reports are in, and the chart in the weather office has passed to the forecaster himself. To provide an easily seen pattern to work from, he first joins all the points with equal barometric pressure. The lines he draws are called isobars. The chart shows regions of low pressure, or depressions, lying to either side of New Zealand. A cold front, the leading edge of a mass of cold air, joins the two. The winds around a depression blow clockwise, following the general direction of the isobars. Where the isobars are closest, the wind is strongest. The general movement of the weather in this area is from west to east. As the centre of the depression nears Cape Egmont, the winds there will be northerly. Soon the cold front will pass over Egmont, making the weather dull and cold with continuous rain. The wind now becomes strong southeasterly. Gradually, as the depression passes over to the east, the intensity of the southeasterly will decrease. The weather will soon be fine and will slowly become warmer. However, another cold front is approaching from the southwest, and in about a day's time, the fine spell will give way to another period of unsettled weather. On these facts, the forecaster works. The forecast is ready. This is the weather office. Situation. A complex depression covers New Zealand. One low pressure centre is located just to the west of Cape Egmont and another to the southeast of Cook Strait. The following are the district forecasts to midnight tomorrow. North Auckland, Auckland and Waikato. Fresh to strong southwesterly winds. By radio, by telegram and telegraph, by every available means, the forecast goes out to every corner of the country. In a few sentences, its compiler has summed up the whole story of wind and rain and sun and cloud to be for the best part of two days. The same forecast has to cover all the weather possibilities for city, rural district, high country and plain in New Zealand and her dependencies. It has to answer the needs of all who are awaiting it. One of the most vital and most widely used of national and international services is provided by the work of the weather office.